Ebola is a very disgraceful and unthankful disease because it affects the people who care about cleaning you, feeding you, making sure that you recover and you get okay. It's the people who later is gonna get infected and probably die. So it's a very, very mean disease. The Ebola virus takes advantage of our particular love for each other as human beings. And in the case of West Africa, of our very sort of tactile nature. We like to touch. It's, it's very significant in our interaction. From the day you're born, we touch you, to the day you die, we touch you. So that very act of caregiving, of, of wiping a fevered brow or cleaning up after somebody can also be the thing that then infects the next family member. When they're vomiting, when they have diarrhea or they're bleeding, those bodily fluids can be highly infected. And then a doctor, a nurse, a family member comes into contact with those bodily fluids. When they splash onto their eyeballs, the inside of their mouth, the nostrils, which happens when you're looking after somebody, that's how they become infected. This was right on the border, really, of three countries, Sierra Leone, Liberia, and Guinea. Three countries with porous borders, dense population. This outbreak went on from late 2013 through the first several months of 2014 before it was recognized as Ebola. No one in West Africa who was infected at first, they and the people around them didn't know what was happening. They thought it was some other disease that they were familiar with. And so unfortunately, in the way that they were taking care of each other, they were spreading the disease. Dozens, probably scores of people died before a single case was eventually diagnosed and confirmed in the laboratory as Ebola. A lab in France has confirmed the Ebola virus as the Ebola source. Ebola virus is the source of a deadly outbreak in Guinea. Doctors Without Borders now has more than 30 people on the ground with more on the way. Anyone who fights fighters will tell you it's those first minutes that make all the difference in the world between being something contained in a minor event or being a disaster. Despite having organizations like Doctors Without Borders coming in, it just wasn't enough. The Ebola fire was not contained early and very quickly became a major alarm event. If you are sick, one of the things that normally you tend to do is go with your family. I go with my mom, I go with my sister, who's gonna take care of me. Suddenly, one child is sick with a fever and then gets to the point of death. And then your next child, you might have four or five children and three or four of them get sick and die. Can you imagine what that means to you as a parent? And, and likely you're going to get it too. Then once families became major units of transmission, we then saw social events such as funerals where many people had contact with the infected body, which now transmitted to many other families, almost like satellite events. And so that just fueled the outbreak in our culture. When somebody dies, they tend to be washed by their closest friends and family. It is an honor and it is a, a final act of, of saying goodbye. You wash the body, you collect the water, and you use that water to baptize and to wash all the children and all the women and all the people that you think that should be blessed. And then from one funeral, you get 18 people infected of Ebola because of that because of tradition. And if they're infected and then they go home to their villages and then they die there and then there's another burial there, the virus is able to move beyond our efforts to contain it. 